Hi, brothers and sisters. I was thinking about uh, the Jews that I had heard that they were trying to do a sacrifice for this Passover this year, this season. And so I looked up, I found this article here, published on 4-4-2017 at 9.22 p.m. Very interesting. Um, it says, Jewish activists seeking to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem will be conducting a ritual Passover sacrifice of a lamb in a nearby park in full view of the Temple Mount. The ceremony is expected to raise opposition and protest from the Islamic Waqf, uh, which the Israeli government permits to administer visits and activity on the Temple Mount known to Muslims as the Noble Sanctuary. The sacrifice ceremony this year is scheduled to take place closer to the Temple Mount than previous rituals which were held in the Mount of Olives across the valley. Temple Mount activists, some of whom are involved with the Passover sacrifice, are pushing to rebuild a Jewish temple in accordance with Bible prophecies. Uh, it remains unclear whether Israeli police have approved this year's ceremony. Tensions over Jewish activity on the Temple Mount have led to eruptions and violence in the past between Israelis and Palestinians. Meanwhile, the Temple Mount Institute released a video explaining why Jews should conduct such a sacrifice this year, despite the fact that the temple has not been rebuilt. Uh, what is this, the video? Let's see. In 2017 means business. Own one. Express franchise owners have $0.6 million in annual sales. An oil change franchise needs 147,000 oil changes. So the Passover sacrifice ceremony has been conducted annually. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Korban Pesach, the Passover offering. It's a thing of the past. It can't be done in our time. It's not relevant for us. We don't have the Beit HaMikdash today. And anyway, we don't do Korbanot anymore. But just a minute. Not relevant today? Let's look at the Torah itself. You shall observe this matter as a decree for yourself and for your children forever. In fact, Korban Pesach and Bris Mila, circumcision, are the only positive commandments whose non-compliance carries the serious spiritual penalty of Kuris. They are equal. What Jew today would not circumcise his son? God forbid. Okay, but what about impurity? How could we bring a Korban Pesach if we're all Tameh today? What about the Kohanim? How do we even know who's a real Kohen today? And don't we need to know the exact location of the Mizbeach, the altar on Har Habayit, the place where the altar is supposed to stand? Well, did you know that great Gedolim, such as Rabbi Akiva Eger and the Chasm Sofer, were mamish concerned about renewing the Korban Pesach? And they carried on a lengthy correspondence on the subject. And in their responsa, they found solutions to all these halachic issues. They concluded that the mitzvah of bringing the Korban Pesach is equally binding upon the Jewish people when they're in a state of tuma as when they are tahor, based on the principle of tuma hutra b'tzibor, that bringing the offering is permitted when the entire congregation is impure. Concerning how to know who is a real Kohen today, the Chasim Silver concluded, based on the concept of Chazaka, that Kohanim in our time are kosher for the Avodah in the Beit HaMikdash and can bring the Korban Pesach today. Now, lest you say, but we need the presence of a Kohen Gadol adorned with its sits on his forehead. Well, among other famed authorities, the Maharat Chayas established that in the absence of a Kohen Gadol, it is sufficient for a Kohen Hedyot, an ordinary Kohen, to offer the Korban Pesach while dressed in his Big Day Kohuna, his priestly garments. In Jerusalem, kosher priestly garments have already been prepared and are ready for use today. With regards to not having a Beit HaMikdash today, the Maharat Chayas cites the Rambam and states that even if the temple is not yet rebuilt, an altar can be built in accordance with historical precedence. And in his seminal work, Drishat Sion, Rabbi Tzvi Hirsch Kalasher outlines a plan for measuring and establishing the exact location of the Mizbeach on the Temple Mount. Today, under the present circumstances, all this could actually be done. 
Throughout the generations, as the Torah testifies, the Korban Pesach has always signaled a new beginning for the nation. So it was in the time of Yehoshua, of Chizkiyahu, of Yeshayahu, and of Ezra. In each instance, the Pesach offering heralded national rejuvenation and spiritual renewal. The Korban Pesach, synonymous with redemption itself, is the most powerful expression of Jewish identity and Israel's mission to fearlessly slaughter idolatry. It represents the nation's true faith in God, and like the bris milah, it conveys our eternal confidence. Thus it can be seen as the national circumcision of the Jewish people. The Korban Pesach is a commandment binding on every generation. Check the sources below for yourself. Let's get serious about fulfilling our eternal obligation and be honest when our children ask us, why is this night different from nights? It's the Korban Pesach. Please check out all the sources for the lessons discussed in this video in the description text below. And please feel free to join in the conversation in the com Okay, so, yeah. I didn't understand half of those words, maybe not all of those words, but they are um, really trying to go through the, the ducks and the chickens and get everything lined up for their sacrificing and uh, not even wait for the temple to be rebuilt. Um, I just know that the Lord came and gave himself a living sacrifice so that we would not have to live um, under the law anymore. And, uh, you know, it's like a slap in the face to the Lord um, that they didn't, they still don't believe that he came and fulfilled the law. They still, they claim to this day that he did not come and fulfill any law that was written before the law of Moses. And, um, it's really sad. And the Lord says that he's really hurt. He's very grieved. He's making it known to all of his people that he's very hurt and very grieved by this. And, um, so, yeah, so they, there was another article I read that it was talking about how they saved 15 goats. Uh, and here's the number, 15 years. They've been trying to, they went underground, semi-underground event in which an animal was sacrificed a few days before Passover. There's been, I don't think this is the one that I found, but let's see. No, I must have exited off, but... There was one where um, they saved 15 goats, and uh, let's see, they tried to... Subscribe uh, to... Sorry, you guys. Um, anyway, I just also, too, I wanted to just do a recap on... Um, I heard... The Lord speak to me in a dream. I think it was about, it was, uh, the day before Nissan, uh, and I had no clue what Nissan was until someone commented on my video and said, don't you know, uh, it's the eve of Nissan today when I made the video and I was just blown away. Um, but his words were, man will have permission to rule for 40 days, Nissan, 40 days, okay, and I think, um, that was on the 22nd, or the 23rd, I can't remember, but, um, <clears throat> when I, when I, uh, calculated 40 days, uh, on the calendar, it hit right at May 5th, and here in California, that Cinco de Mayo, it was some battle with, um, Texas, the Mexicans in Texas or something like that. But um, I seen another sister's video and she was talking about the midnight cry and she was going on about something, uh, um, something um, that the Lord directed her, uh, brought forth to her in May. Um, 
uh, anyway, I'm sorry. My, my brain's kind of, my, my neighbors out here and I'm just like, Oh man. <laughs> um, so, um, with the 40 days that would put it on May 5th. So, um, we just need to be praying and, and, uh, you know, uh, the Lord, his judgment is coming very soon. Um, no, uh, no nation is going to be exempt. It's going to be Russia and China and America and uh, Australia, the Middle East, Ukraine. The Lord brought my attention to Ukraine the other day on, a, on Google Earth. I actually typed in, I think it was 9-11 or 5-11, the coordinates, and it took me right straight over to Ukraine. It was the craziest thing. But, um, so all these, you know, World War III is happening. It's going to happen. It's imminent. It's going to come upon us very soon. And, um, if you don't know Jesus, call out to him. Get to a Bible study. Pick up a Bible. Start asking him. Uh, confess. Start believing that he died on the cross for you. That he gave himself as a living sacrifice. As a, as a perfect lamb. He died on the cross and he shed his blood. So that no man would perish. But all would have everlasting life. And live with him in paradise. You know. And... Uh, just try to develop a relationship with him to where you know that he's your savior. He's your Lord of Lords and King of Kings in your life. Because things are going to hit the fan pretty soon, friends. So let's all just be praying and asking forgiveness and just seeking his face and waiting upon him. And, and uh, let's look uh, on that date, May 5th. All right. Just wanted to sound the alarm with that and and be watching Israel. Be watching what's going on over there. Because they're going to shine out like a light into the world. All right, brothers and sisters. I love you guys and I'm praying for the body of Christ in Jesus name. Amen.